Hey guys, and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas. Hopefully you're all doing well. Uh, today I'm really excited about this video because I'm gonna be sharing with you my cookbook collection. I came up with this idea last night at like two in the morning after finishing editing my um, first weekly vlog of Vlogmas, and I just thought, you know what? Because I'm gonna be sharing so much food in these vlogs, maybe I should share with you guys some of the places where I get my inspiration. So I don't have a huge collection, I can literally keep them all right here on my lap, but let's go ahead and just dive into them. This was the first cookbook I think I ever owned, um, and this is 100 Easy Recipes, Super Fun Food for Every Day, and this is by the Food Network Magazine. Now, my mom bought this for me when I was in law school because it was the first time I was ever living on my own and having to cook for myself, and um, you know, I already knew basic recipes, but she just thought I might use this as kind of a quick reference guide. I honestly don't really use this one too, too much except for some of the salad recipes. Um, they've got a very good pasta salad recipe in particular. And although it's nice to have as kind of a quick reference guide because there are literally so many recipes in here, um, it's not what I would suggest for new cooks. I think the problem is that the recipes are just so short. I mean, yes, I get that they're supposed to be simple, but uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like they're sometimes too simple. Sometimes you need a little bit more explanation and you don't get a picture of every single recipe on here, which I think as a new cook is really important because you're like, what the heck is this supposed to look like? The next cookbook in my collection is super, super beautiful. And that is The Forest Feast, Simple Vegetarian Recipes from My Cabin in the Woods by Erin Gleason. I'm sorry. This is just... It's so freaking beautiful, like this whole thing. Even the inside is stunning. It's got like these beautiful like watercolor tie-dye um, section header pages. And then, I mean, can we, can we just really? If I'm completely honest with you guys, I have never actually made any of the recipes out of here, but it's just so damn gorgeous that I will never get rid of it. Also, it has a lot of really great, again, kind of quick guides. So if you're looking for just um, some information on how to mix flavors, if you're looking on some general like sauce information, I think it's a really great one to have. Erin Gleason also goes over things like knife techniques um, and different cuts and, and things like that. So I just think it's a really great one. And if you're looking to get somebody, actually this would be a great Christmas gift for a foodie person who also likes like super aesthetic coffee table books, this just might be a beautiful one to give. Another cookbook in my collection is Small Victories, Recipes, Advice, and Hundreds of Ideas from Home Cooking Triumphs by Julia Tertian. I think that's how you say it. If you're looking for a cookbook for new cooks, this is something I would definitely, definitely recommend. So all of the recipes in here are, I mean, some of them can be a little bit complicated, but there's also a lot of really simple ones and it's like, it's mainly text. So I know, I know people like food photos, but there's a lot of really great written instructions in here. She also provides a lot of variations on each recipe. So say like you don't have this one ingredient, but you have everything else. Well, that shouldn't stop you from making the recipe. You can just substitute or change it up. At the beginning here, she goes over um, some things to keep in mind. So she goes over like different kitchen tools. She goes over what fruits and vegetables you need to peel and what you can leave the skin on. She goes over prep time and just like general cooking mindset. And I really like this. I think it's a really great um, instructional book. I know some cookbooks are more about the aesthetic. This one's got a really nice aesthetic, but it's also just really well written and really instructional. If you guys saw the jam recipe at the end of my first Vlogmas vlog and you liked how simple it was, I got it out of this book. So I would definitely say this is a really great kind of things you should know how to cook cookbook. And I really can't wait to get into more of the recipes. Then probably my most used cookbook is The Baker's Book of Essential Recipes by Good Housekeeping. Now, this poor thing is always covered in flour. I had like butter sticking the pages together and there's like, oh, there's brown sugar in here. This is essentially like a baker's Bible. Uh, so they go over cookies, brownies, bars, cakes, pies, tarts, cobblers, custards, and baked desserts, savory and sweet breads, special specialty pastries, frostings, fillings, and flourishes. So if you are at all interested in baking, if you have been bitten by the British baking bug, I would definitely suggest checking this one out. And if you're a new baker, I think this was a must have. Um, I only really started baking baking last year and this has not let me down so far. Some of my favorite things in here are just the chocolate chip cookies. I think they are delicious. The um, oatmeal raisin cookies are pretty good too, but I think my absolute favorite thing to cook or to bake from here is, well they don't have a finished picture, but it's the 
challah here. It's a breaded loaf. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that on Thanksgiving I made that breaded loaf. Ironically, I always screw up basic like loaf bread, basic sandwich bread, but the challah is not, I, I haven't messed it up yet and I've made it a couple of times. The only thing out of this book I have ever ruined uh, was the soda bread recipe and I think that's because I tried to sour my milk rather than using buttermilk. Um, but in general, I think this is a foolproof baking book and it's one I would highly recommend, especially if you have somebody in your life who's trying to, to get into making some sweet treats. Okay, two more, uh, and the next one here is The Paleo Cookbook by Jodi Cohen and Galad Cohen. As you can probably tell by the fact that I just raved about a baking book, um, I am not paleo. I, I don't follow any particular diet. I kind of, I guess, if you had to categorize the way I eat, I eat like 80-20, where 80% of the time I eat things that are really good for me, and then 20% of the time I eat whatever the heck I want. That being said, half of my family is gluten-free. They actually have celiac disease, so it's not of choice. And then I personally have discovered over the last like couple of years that I react to like processed white flour not so well. Um, if you guys have noticed my acne um, over the past couple of years, that seems to be really triggered by one sugar, but two, just like white flour products. So I'm trying to eat a little bit less of it and just like put a little bit more variety in my diet. And that is why my mom bought me this for my birthday. Because I'm not strictly paleo, I can't say that this is a great representation of the diet or not. But I think if you are looking to limit some of the grains in your diet, I think this gives some really interesting um, alternatives. Though again, not a fan of how few pictures there are. I mean like, how am I supposed to cook something if I don't know what it's supposed to look like? I love that the one picture I find in here is like of smashed avocado. Like everybody knows what that's supposed to look like. What is the point of that? And then the last cookbook I have here to show you guys is technically not mine. I stole it from my mom, but she has not yet asked for it back. So I'm just gonna hold on to it. And that is Middle Eastern Cooking by Jenny Ridgewell and International Gourmet. Compared to the other books I've shown you guys, this is tiny. And yes, the recipe instructions are very, um, Hemingway would be proud, they are brief. However, if you're looking for just like a quick guide to Middle Eastern cooking, I think this is fantastic. I actually don't know if you can get this book anymore. Um, so what I'll do actually is go ahead and provide links to all the books I've talked about today in the description box below. And if I can't find this one in particular, maybe I'll just link another Middle Eastern inspired cookbook. And I should say that I have not yet made any of the recipes in here, but what I really like about this um, cookbook is that they break down the recipes not only by category of food, but also by um, country. So for example, when they provide you with a recipe, they put the um, country that it's from right here at the top. So if you were looking for cuisine from a specific country, or if you were trying to get more in touch with your heritage uh, through their cuisine, uh, you can do that very easily. I think my mom used to use this book in combination with her grandmother's recipes when we were making Lebanese food at home. So uh, it's one that I really hope to dive more into next year because I've been getting more into cooking Middle Eastern food this year. It just seems to be like the spice profile that I'm most comfortable with. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to dive into this one and really glad that my mom hasn't noticed that I stole it from her house. So those are the cookbooks that I currently own, uh, though I have asked for like one or two for Christmas, so we'll have to see if people come through. If you guys have a favorite cookbook, I would really like to know that in a comment down below. But for now, that is all I have for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.